What we're gonna do today is make the battery trays to hold all the batteries in the car. I really want something easy, simple, and standardized. So what I came up with was a system of battery trays, which are basically gonna be U-shaped steel pans of various lengths with dividers and bolts to hold the batteries into them. And I'll make the different lengths to fit in different parts of the car. I scrounged the steel up. I actually wound up with 13 gauge galvanized steel. It's fairly heavy, but I think it'll, it'll work really well holding the batteries and it's not likely to rust. So what I've got right here is gonna be the battery tray that's gonna sit in the front of the car and hold two batteries in the engine compartment. First thing I wanna do is find the center line of this plate. It's 24 inches long. My center line is going to be at 12 inches. Because it's going to hold two batteries, there's going to be one battery on either side of that center line. So I've taken some junk wood and I've cut it to the shape of the tray size that I'm going to need. So what you do is you set it in and line the edge of it up with the center line. And then you're going to take flat plates of steel, the same material the trays are made out of, cut to size, and fit them in there. The other thing I need to hold down the batteries are going to be bolts that are going to pull the batteries down and hold them into the tray. And I wound up with a box of quarter inch threaded rod that are a little bit too long but are the right idea. These are going to sit between the batteries and allow me to put a nut and a clamp on the top to hold the batteries into the tray. So now it's time to make a mess. The first thing I've got to do is mark the rods and cut them to length. It turns out the rods need to be about a quarter of an inch longer than the plates, so I have a handy measuring device with me. The other thing I've done is look at the edge of the rods and find factory ends so that they aren't stripped out and try to leave those on. So we'll start out, mark our rods. This doesn't have to be precise because there's going to be a nut going down on the rod to hold it in. I'm not worried about precision here. So then I'm going to come over here to the saw and I'm going to cut the three rods to length. Now that everybody's cringed, it's a metal cutting bandsaw. Very small teeth, the blade does not go very fast. It's not like a wood cutting bandsaw where if you hit it with your hand, you're gonna lose a finger. The reality is, is I had a pair of gloves down here that I can't find. And I should be wearing gloves when I do this. I wouldn't even cut my finger if I bumped into the blade then. But I'll just have three to do, I'm gonna be careful. Please don't blame me. Now what I wanna do is cut some way on these rods so that they'll fit over the plates and that I can weld the plate and the rod together. If I just weld the rod to the side of the plate, it's too thick. The batteries won't fit together. I tried cutting a slot in the rod with the saw, but the plates are too thick. They're more than twice the thickness of the saw blade. I could have bought a slitting saw and cut them. I could have done a bunch of things. But the reality is, is these rods are gonna be under tension. Their job is to pull the batteries down. Side to side movement is going to be almost minimal because the tray will keep the battery from moving. So what I'm going to do is split the rod up about a half an inch, cut off one side so I've got a half moon rod, and then I'll take that, clamp it to the side of the plate and weld it in place. So let me go ahead and do some cuts. But now I've got three half moons cut. They'll actually sit nicely on the plate and I can weld that in place. Now I've built a little jig here that does two things. One is it keeps that rod perpendicular, perpendicular to the plate. And the other is that it makes sure that all the plates are lined up the same where the rod comes off. So when I put them in the tray, all the, all the rods will line up. So I start out with the plate, clamp the plate in, Put the rod in, and you'll notice it overlaps about half an inch. Clamp the rod down, and then I'm using the grounding clamp from the welder to clamp the other side of the plate. I check and make sure everything's lined up right, and then I go ahead and weld it. Now, one of the problems I had when I first did this is that the rod is tension-wise very strong, but side to side it could bend off because I only have half the rod welded. So before I go any further, I'm gonna tack the top of the rod to the top of the plate from the back and that'll keep it from flexing.
Okay, I've got one of the blocks in place, and now you see why I made these notches. That way the rods don't hit when I weld it together. Fit in the plates and start clamping. That does it. I only put short welds in four places rather than weld the whole seam. It needs to be strong. It doesn't need to hold water. But all I have to do now, take the last clamp off, pull out the block, and I have a tray that will fit one of my batteries. One of the other things I'm doing, since I wasn't going to guarantee precision, is I'm going to line the trays with a quarter inch thick layer of closed cell foam. You'll see these sheets up here. Found a local foam store that had those and I bought those. That's going to do a couple of things for me. First of all, if the trays aren't perfect, that'll take care of the difference and let the batteries slide in. It'll keep the batteries from rattling around. And I'll have a sheet on the bottom that will raise the battery up enough so that I can put bolts through the bottom to hold these down inside the car. Now that I've got this one in place, I'm going to put the block on this side, put the other plate here, clamp it all, weld it up, this whole tray will be done. I managed to do six of these trays holding from two to five batteries in less than one afternoon.